make sure I'm doing my technology the right way. Well, here we are, we're recording. So hi, this is Pam with Rock Metaphysical. I have a magazine that's online. It's a new uh, articles and videos and blogs, the first of each month. You can find it online at rock, R-O-C, metaphysical.com. And there's advertising and there's a calendar so you can see what's going on. I am located in Rochester, New York, uh, home of the Fox Sisters and spiritualism had a great start here. The magazine is written from people all over the world and I have writers in Finland and Europe, uh, Great Britain, all over the US and Canada. And so today we're going to be talking to Patricia Coda Robles. She is from the West Coast, and she's joining me today, and I'm so excited. So if I get a little anxious, you'll know why. <laughs> to all the video watchers out there. Uh, so Patricia today is going to talk about her background, and then we're going to talk about the violet flame today. So I'm going to step back and let you, Patricia, start off. Well, thank you. Pam asked me to share something about my background, which is the least important of all of my sharings, I'm sure. <laughs> but I know it's important for people to have some understanding. I was a marriage and family counselor for 20 years, and my lifetime quest had been, since I was little, trying to find out and understand why in the world there's so much pain and suffering on this planet. And my search took me through the gamut of world religions and different fields of psychology and understanding about science and the power of the mind and laws of physics and all of those kinds of things. And I realized that there was this unifying thread of truth, which is referred to by the company of heaven and the beings of light as the law of the circle, which literally means very tangibly that we are creative beings and that through the gift of free will and our creative faculties of thought and feeling we are drawing forth our life force from the heart of god and then we send it forth through our thoughts and feelings and we qualify it with whatever we're thinking and feeling at the time and that energy goes out and manifests in our life experiences and then it returns to us on the return journey back to our father mother god and the catch is that in order for that gift of life to pass through our heart flame, the divinity within us, on its return journey back to God, it has to be vibrating with the same or a higher frequency of perfection. So love and all the frequencies of enlightenment and wonder and awe certainly are easily able to do that. But when we misqualify our gift of life and charge it with fear or with hatred or confusion or greed or corruption or all of the different imbalances that are manifesting as the maladies in the outer world, that energy can't pass through us. So it accumulates around us as this heavier, dark energy and has created now this sea of negativity around the earth it's known as the psychic astral realm and so my question as i came across that knowledge and understanding is if every form of knowledge both spiritual and academic is saying to us that we're responsible for our thoughts words actions and feelings and we are creating our life experiences and if we don't like what's happening in our life by improving and changing our life experiences and our thoughts and feelings, we can improve our lives. So my question was, if everything is telling us that, why in the world are we still in that mess? So I didn't get any really positive answers in the outer world when I, I would ask that question. There were all different kinds of you know, the world religions pretty consistently said, well, it's because Eve ate that darned apple. And <laughs> <laughs> the scientific world said, well, matter evolves out of chaos by happenstance and humanity evolved from an amoeba in a mud puddle by chance. And mm -hmm. there's no rhyme or reason what is just is. So my search then went within and through meditation. And I believed that there was order in the universe and I kept asking God for 
answers, which is what we hear, ask and you shall receive. And gradually I lifted up in frequency enough to realize that we connect with all of the legions of light in the heavenly realms that I refer to most commonly as the company of heaven. And this consists of all of the, the magnificent beings associated with the various world religions, ascended masters, teachers, cosmic beings, solar logos, all graded orders of angels, all the way back to the all-encompassing presence of the cosmic I am, our Father, Mother, God all that is and these beings of light are always they're like college professors compared to us being kindergarten students they've always been there available ready to assist us and help us but they can't interfere with our free will so when we began this qualifying energy which being uh, part of the allegory of partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and what that allegory meant was that we started making the free will choice to express our thoughts and feelings in ways that were not based in love. And so when we did that, then we began creating the chaos in the outer world that is now manifesting every single thing that is anything less than the Garden of Eden state of heaven on earth, which is what we came into for our learning experience originally. So when that occurred and we fell into such dense frequencies we lost contact with the i am presence our own divinity that part of us that's created in god's image and even though our i am presence is always there and has always been standing in readiness we created this fragmented fear-based ego that we call our human ego an alter an alternate part of our personality and because it no longer was able to communicate with the higher realms of truth and consciousness through our I am presence, we started perceiving that the physical plane is all that exists and that our physical body is who we are. So when we got into that state, we just lost awareness of the heavenly realms and the assistance. And, you know, we've all heard probably that universal law, as above, so below. Right. Well, in the outer world, we aren't expected to go through all of the academic processes of learning and getting our PhDs and every advanced level of uh, study and research without professors and teachers and people to guide us along the way. And that is also true with our spiritual development. So now what is happening is that people are beginning to remember that there's an awakening taking place. and. My awareness when I started communicating and receiving just open heart and mind telepathic communication with the company of heaven and all of the beings of light in the heavenly realms, I realized my epiphany was that this was perfectly normal. This is what we were supposed to do. This has nothing to do with being psychic or being, you know, uh, channeling or supernatural extrasensory perception we were always supposed to have that communication so my mission in life has been i thought if people just knew that and were able to receive that information from the company of heaven then they would be able to connect and get their own guidance from the legions of light and so my mission has been to make this information as available in as many ways as possible on the planet without a financial obligation so that nobody would be limited from getting this information because of a financial obligation. So what Pam had asked me to talk about today is the violet flame and it's that's a wonderful wonderful tool and it's one of the most important things we can use to transmute back into light all of this misqualified energy these negative thoughts from lifetimes that we have expressed that have been accumulated and when we fell into the fragmented consciousness of our human ego our ego didn't realize that lifetime after lifetime these same distorted things like poverty consciousness and and the fear-based consciousness or hate or prejudice or 
you know, all of the uh, greed and corruption, all of those things kept manifesting in our life or reflecting what our thoughts and feelings were in the past. So our Father, Mother, God realized that there would be a moment in time. And this is that moment in time. And I say this moment, I don't, I don't mean just this second. I mean, this has been building in momentum for several decades, but this is that cosmic moment in time when we are reclaiming our earth in a love-based frequency, moving into higher frequencies of what's called the new earth, the fifth dimensional crystalline solar frequencies of the new earth. And in order to do that, you know, all the prophecies talking about the new heaven and the new earth and the old earth, all of the maladies would be passing away. Those would be all of the archetypes, the obsolete patterns of greed and corruption and manipulation and control and all of the things that have kept us stuck for so many, many lifetimes. That now it is time for those things to be dismantled and transmuted back into light. So what we're experiencing in the outer world, and to confirm this, all we need to do is turn on the news, is that this is the time biblically that was referred to as the time of screaming and gnashing of teeth. I don't think anybody has any doubt about that. The reason is because people are awakening and the light of God is increasing and everything that conflicts with that light is being pushed to the surface to be transmuted back into light. We have the free will of how we're going to use our light force, but we're responsible for how we choose to use it. And this is pure everything has a degree of intelligence. This is pure, unformed, primal-like substance from the heart of God. And we take that pure electronic light substance and we qualify it with our thoughts and feelings. So when we misqualify it through anger and rage and prejudice and poverty consciousness and even disease and all of the inclement weather conditions that are manifesting in the outer world, if you could see it with your inner vision, it's like this pure electronic light that comes forth joyously expecting to serve the sons and daughters of God. And then we just disqualify it into this gross mutation. It's like this battered and abused life force. So what's happening now is all of this is being pushed to the surface. And that's happening at an accelerated pace. And we can easily see the garbage coming to the surface. What we don't see it easily is the incredible light that's pushing it to the surface. So what the violet flame is, it's the most powerful gift from on high to help us quickly transmute that distorted, battered, battered grossly mutated gift of light that we misqualify to transmute it back into its original perfection. So what the violet flame is, it's called the violet flame of God's infinite perfection. And it is the perfect balance of the masculine polarity of our Father God's sapphire blue radiance of divine will, power, illumined faith, and God's first cause of perfection and the crystalline pink light of our Mother God's transfiguring and comprehensive divine love and oneness and reverence for life. And when those two energies merge, they create this magnificent violet flame. Now, there are various ages that we move through, through the 12 sun cycles, and each one pulsates with one of the 12 solar aspects of deity, which are frequencies of our Father, Mother, God. The reason this is coming to the fore in such a powerful way now is because this violet flame, which is known as the seventh solar aspect of deity, will be the predominant influence on the planet throughout the age of Aquarius, which we have just entered. So for the next 2,000 years, this magnificent gift from our Father, Mother, God will be bathing the earth. 
And when we use the violet flame, all we need to do is first connect with our I am presence. And Archangel Michael showed me that in order to invoke this light on behalf of every person on earth, all we have to say is I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of every person on earth. And when we do that, the light explodes through our I am presence, sends a ray of light into the heart flame of every other person's I am presence. That I am presence then is alerted and stands in readiness knowing that one of the sons and daughters of God, and we are one, all interconnected, that one of the sons and daughters of God on earth is invoking light on their behalf. Their I am presence then receives the violet flame and utilizes it in perfect alignment with that soul's divine plan and their highest good. So we can never interfere with anybody's learning process by doing this for them. But we can greatly empower their I am presence ability to help them because the universal law is the call for assistance must come from the realm where the assistance is needed. So if those of us in physical embodiment invoke the violet flame on behalf of our sisters and brothers in physical embodiment, then it gives their I am presence permission to intervene in alignment with their divine plan and their highest good. Can so I answer the question? Oh, certainly, absolutely. Okay, so um, a friend of mine that's very familiar with your work wanted to know, does the violet flame always remain at the same level of energy or has it gotten better as we become yeah. more spiritual? I, I think, I realize that more and more people are becoming more aware. Yes, the violet flame has infinite potential of frequencies all the way back to the heart of God. And the various qualities, and these are just a few of them, are mercy, compassion, forgiveness, transmutation, liberty, justice, freedom, victory, and a frequency of divine glory and transfiguration. And it is vibrating through the I am presence of every person in perfect alignment with what they are able to uh, safely receive during that cosmic moment. So the I am presence of every person determines how much power we can never be hurt by utilizing the violet flame. It'll always be in perfect alignment with our highest good when we go through our I am presence. And we just do that by saying, I am my I am presence. And if we want to help every other person on earth, all we need to say is I am my I am presence and I am one with every other person, with the I am presence of every other person on earth. So my follow-up question would be, um, she does a lot of energy work and is helping people or becomes aware of a situation. And if there is a specific person, could you just say it's Mary and I want to, you know, send it to Mary? Yes, the I am presence of Mary. Mm -hmm. I want to send this violet flame through the I am presence of Mary. Okay. And then her presence, her I am presence knows exactly what her life path is how many lessons she needs to go, how close she is to completing that experience, and will not interfere with the learning process, but will help her the maximum that cosmic law will allow in that moment. All right, and my other question is that when I do my meditation and I do refer to the violet flame, and I just ask for it to go where it needs to go? Yes, and we don't have to figure out every single thing. There's no way we'll know that. What I encourage people to do is to say, for instance, I am my I am presence and I invoke, I am one with the I am presence of every other person on earth. And I invoke the most intensified frequencies of the violet flame that I'm capable of receiving. 
and I send it forth. It goes forth from our heart plane, flooding through this psychic astral realm. It magnetizes all of the energy vibrating with our individual and collective frequency into it. And just say, I ask that every thought, word, action, or feeling I've ever misqualified in any time, frame, or dimension, both known and unknown, now be transmuted back into light. And that is so easy and yet monumentally powerful. And we can do that on a daily basis and just see this magnificent light flowing through you, bathing the earth, transmuting it back into light again, lifting everything up. And then, of course, you can certainly work on specific areas to asking to transmute all poverty consciousness of yourself or to transmute all traces of disease or aging or degeneration that's occurring or greed or corruption or transmute everything on a more global level everything that conflicts for instance which is perfect right now everything that conflicts with divine government which is a government of the i am presence by the i am presence for the i am presence reveling in our diversity in our individualized life path as sons and daughters of god working toward raising everybody up into the love-based frequencies of the new earth. So it's so easy and so powerful. And if you don't feel comfortable using the term violet flame, you can you call the angels and the legions associated with forgiveness or with mercy or compassion. But when you invoke the violet flame, which is the perfect balance of our father mother bond it includes all of those magnificent qualities in exactly the frequencies that you personally and humanity collectively needs okay so i bought your book a long time ago I'll make sure you can see it here so it's called the violet flame and there is background about it so you know they've listened to your you speak on the video and they want to get more detail there's a lot of detail in the book about why and how it works and then there's also uh, prayers I guess you could say or meditations that are in the back of the book that you can read that are about very specific things or they're just lovely to read you know you can just pick a page and just say, well, today I want to work on the I am eternal peace. And there's a lovely prayer that you could read that is going to have a positive impact. So I just wanted to tell people that the book is available. And you also told me it's an MP3. Yeah, we have the book is The Violet Flame and it is an ebook as well. And then we also have uh, two cds or downloadable mp3s that are also the violet flame that are that are complementary and expand that in case you want the meditations to hear and have it have it as a guided visualization now all of the information in the books we have distributed through our newsletters and our weekly vlogs and our articles and radio interviews all of those things are available on our website for free but in addition to that, we have these available. People wanted more tangible things that they wouldn't have to search through several newsletters or whatever <laughs> to find the information. So it's, it's very easy. And we, uh, they're, they're available for anybody that's interested. Right. And the book was very reasonable. I mean, I purchased it from your website. So your website is called ERA, E-R-A of Peace. Is that your current website? Yes, it's eraofpeace.org. And so there's all kinds of information on there. And also, I think I'm on there for newsletters. And also, you have a whole YouTube channel with weekly vlogs that you do. Yes, it's just a short 15-minute uh, video every week with information from the Company of Heaven current and tangible on how we can assist most at this moment with the unfolding divine plan on earth right and the other thing we were talking about is that you do an annual conference and it's going to be online this year 
Yes, we have an annual. This is the 34th annual World Congress on Illumination. We began with the first harmonic convergence in August of 1987. I'm very old and have been around for a very long time. <laughs> and we've been uh, always had this wonderful global event. And this is the first time that we haven't been able to have it physically. And so we've had hundreds of thousands of people now by this time tuning in with us in consciousness all over the world every year, sending us the light. And then we never know exactly what's going to occur at the World Congress because the beings of light guide us through. And each day, the facet of the divine plan is contingent on what's been accomplished the day before. So after everything's over, I write a newsletter and describe it to everybody so they'll know what they were participating in. For the very first time, this is going to be online. We're offering it free to everybody. Wow. Uh, it'll be from the October 17th through the 22nd, a two-hour event every morning, sharing the information from the Company of Heaven. And we're in the process of getting all of that set up. But if you want to go to our website, eraofpeace.org, and sign up for our newsletter and our weekly blogs, you will definitely get a mailing telling you exactly how to register for the World Congress. Uh, and it will be, as I said, free of charge for the very first time. And was it World Congress? Did you used to travel? Because one of my friends, I think, went overseas. Was it France or? Yes, we the World Congress wasn't, but we, did for a long time and we haven't for a little while uh but we had uh every other year we would do a pilgrimage to some place on the planet to countries all over the world and uh took a group with us and we'd have about 125 people traveling with us on these wonderful pilgrimages and maybe we'll be able to do that again before long certainly not during COVID and all of this challenge that's going on at this time but we had the pilgrimages in addition to the annual world congress on illumination yeah I, she had a lovely time on the trip and i had hoped and maybe in the future we'll be able to travel again and you'll have a wonderful trip that i can sign up for and yes. it's great to know that that congress is free and if yes. it's going to be recorded so you can listen to it later if you can't make the morning online live yes it's probably going to be at 10 o'clock every morning but we work in the eternal moment of now and whenever you are tuning in it's live for you whenever okay. you're watching it and it'll be distributed like on the, the uh, vehicle of, of youtube and so that it'll be once it's recorded it'll be there and you can go back and watch it anytime you want to oh great oh i'm excited i'm glad i asked that question yes that'll be great and i'll send you all the details on how to register that information will come out uh, if you sign up on our newsletter so that i'll have access to you that'll be great okay well is there anything else that i didn't ask that you'd want to share with us well, I just want to say how very grateful I am for all of your wonderful uh, uh, people that are joining us on this newsletter and all of the work that you're doing on your ROC uh, metaphysical uh, connection and magazine. This is such a critical time and all of us are one and we're working at inner levels together where we're, whether we're even hearing each other for the very first time or hearing of each other, that's just an outer world delusion because we're all <laughs> working at inner and outer levels uh, to co-create this magnificent facet of the divine plan. And no part of the plan is any more important than another. Every person has a golden thread of light that they are weaving into this cosmic moment. So God bless you. And I'm well, thank so you. For you, Pam, for all the light you're at. Well, I thank you. You've been doing this for quite a long time. I'm just kind of stepping in now. You know, I've had the magazine for about four years, and I've had a, a metaphysical meetup for about 10, and uh, having people talk and teach about what they know. And it's been fun and a great learning experience, and I get to talk to lots of very lovely, interesting people. So it's a win win all the way around. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, well, I'm going to hit the stop record button and hopefully it's going to work. <laughs>